Hey, what's going on everyone? Axel here. So today we're gonna talk about this, which is DDO's novel, uh, The Shard Axe. This is the first of, as far as I know, only two actually um, officially licensed by Wizards of the Coast novels that were released specifically for Dungeons and Dragons Online. And uh, the, the first one obviously is this one, The Shard Axe, uh, which is the one I have read. Uh, there's a sequel to this called Skeen of Shadows, which as far as I know was only released digitally. The Shard Axe was released digitally and physically. I believe they also have audiobook versions, but uh, if you're interested in any of these novels, um, to get a digital copy, go to Amazon. You can find one for this and its sequel. And uh, for physical copies of The Shard Axe, probably gonna have to look on eBay um, buy something buy, to buy it secondhand. Um, anyways, so in this video, I'm going to just tell you what I think about, about the novel. Uh, I, it is, this video is going to be spoiler light. I'm not going to, um, give away any like important plot points, anything like that, but I will talk generally about the novel. So if you want to not know anything and you maybe want to read this, maybe don't watch the video, but I'm going to keep it very spoiler light. So I'm not going to give away like any major, any major spoilers, but I will talk about a few things here or there. Okay. So essentially, um, this novel it, I guess the first thing to know about it is it was published in 2011. So this is an old, not older novel. It's not like recently released anything like that. So it was written, I would imagine it was writ written like between 20, 2009 and 2010 ish. So that's the era of the game we're talking about. Like the, the earlier stages of the game um, is where this takes place in. It was written and published before Menace of the Underdark. So it's the older stuff, older locations of the game. So um, in the novel, just to give like a general overview, um, you essentially uh, follow the adventures of Sabira, who's this uh, marshal of House Deneth. So essentially like a cop. And she's going around um, catching bad guys. She's getting into trouble. Um, she's having to fight her way out of trouble. Um, the, the first half of the novel is more action based. So it, I would say it's faster paced and it's really about her uh, fighting her way out of a lot of different uh, problems she finds herself in. And then the second half kind of shifts to more of a mystery who done it style story that uh, she, where Sabira is kind of searching to find the main bad guy of the novel, figure out who it is and find him. So um, yeah, that's uh, essentially what's going on here. And uh, also um, I guess, first thing to say is there are a lot of in-game locations that uh, are in the novel, obviously. I mean, taking place in DDO. So some of the locations, um, it starts out in Corthos, appropriately enough. And it also, um, you'll go to House Deneth, House Kunderak, House Florian. There's a lot of taverns in-game that are in this novel. Market The marketplace, There's air, you'll visit airships, uh, sewers. There's a lot of different uh, locations you'll, you'll find yourself in 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 game in this novel as well there's also um, even some in in game quests and npcs that are in this novel so like uh two quests are referenced as far as i could tell the only two qu in game actual quests that were referenced and those are cage trolls and rest for the restless it's not described in like great detail or anything but she does actually go sabira does go on those quests um like in in the novel um although it's just very like i said very briefly explained and it doesn't go into great detail about those two quests but uh there's also a lot of npcs in-game npcs that are in the novel as minor characters so i'll put some of them on the screen right now so you can check those out but like i said a lot of these may just only like only appear once or appear briefly um all the major characters in the novel are original so it, it's not like like most of the focus is put on in-game NPCs. It's not. Most of the focus um, of the novel is on original characters. So I guess since I've given you kind of a very general overview of the novel, um, I guess I can talk a little bit about the protagonist. So the protagonist is Sabira. She's an interesting character, I would say. Uh, she's not a Mary Sue by any means. Uh, she's a very flawed character. And I actually found myself not liking her at all. She grew, she gets better as the novel go, goes on. But at first, I really didn't like the character. Not in terms of writing standpoint, but in terms of like a personal moral standpoint. I didn't like Sabira. Like, Sabira is not a very good person. Uh, especially like in the first half of the novel, she does a lot of messed up things. Um, th th in the first chapter, and I'll describe this because it's not really a spoiler. Because like you've learned this immediately upon reading the novel. Um, she's very resentful because her... Um, her partner that she worked with in her job uh, got killed and it was kind of her fault 
So she's very resentful for that. She also has an anger issue as described by the author. And she kind of treats most people she, she runs into in the novel uh, really badly. Like she's pretty mean to, to most people that she comes across. Um, you know, she's pretty uh, passive aggressive. She does some Im pretty immoral things like in the very, very first uh, like chapter or two. And I'll describe this, not really a spoiler. Um, she essentially captures a prisoner. And after the prisoner is... Um, you know, captured, restrained, all that. She like beats him, like breaks his jaw. And uh, the prisoner was taunting her. Uh, I'll give her that. But at the same time, I mean, as a professional, you, you know, you shouldn't be beating restrained prisoners. So that wasn't great. She also kind of gets into some dealings with some shady figures, um, like has gambling debt. You know, she does, she's involved in some shady things and, and doesn't treat people the best. And a lot of that is uh, fuel from her anger and the way she treats people um, maybe this is the way I took it is that the poor treatment of other people really stems from her resentment uh, of losing her her partner, and she's just very very resentful about that and kind of takes it out on other people she meets. But she does grow, you know, as the novel goes on, um, kind of becomes a better person, I would say, as the novel goes on. Uh, so she grew on me. So when you get into the second half of the novel, like I said, it, it, there is a big shift from a kind of more fast paced action novel to a more passive more i guess not passive probably isn't the right word but a slower more who done it mystery um there's also a, a several chapters uh, that cover like a court trial um there's a lot of there's a lot of things to know about uh things you have to learn and remember about dwarven lineages uh, a lot of the novel focuses on like a dwarven society and all the various uh like all, it's, you, you have a lot of dwarven characters. You need to understand like who's married to who, who is whose nephew, who's whose uncle, who's whose father. Um, there's a lot to remember. And that's one thing I, I will say I didn't really enjoy about the book is there are a lot of characters and a lot of, um, a lot of things to remember. And I had to flip back constantly because I couldn't remember like, okay, um, this character is this um, this other guy's son or nephew or what, uh, who is this character? There's also characters that are also sometimes uh, given, uh, like sometimes their nicknames are used instead of the real name. So that was kind of confusing. Um, but there's a lot to know. There's a lot of characters that kind of come and go, but there's a lot that you, you need to remember from a prior, um, a prior part of the novel, like exactly what was described by the author. So the last few chapters after the second half really goes more into a, a slower whodunit mystery style, the last few chapters, really ramp up back into the action again and those I would say the last few chapters which I actually read yesterday were my favorite part of the novel um, the action scenes are really good I really like how the author d describes the she does a really good job um, the author by the way uh, Marshila Rockwell does a really good job uh, describing the action scenes and writes those very well um, as far as the you know who done it I, I don't I didn't really enjoy that part of the novel as much and there are a lot of twists by the way that uh, some of them I didn't see coming but some I, I definitely did uh, especially the there's a, a couple big ones at the end and one of those I definitely saw coming uh, but I do think this novel um, if you have it and you wanted to reread it it would be a great novel to reread at least the second half I don't know that you need to read the first half the more action part um, but I, I think it would be cool to actually reread re the second half because you would pick up on a lot of clues now that you know you know what the twists are you could pick up on a lot of clues on a second reading and you would also get a better understanding of all who, how who all these characters are and how they intertwine because like I said it was um, rather confusing for me and I had to keep flipping back but now that I've read it once it'd be easier to to remember who everyone was and how everyone relates so I think a second reading would be like of a novel you want to read twice this would be a good choice for that there's a lot to actually rediscover on a second reading um the other thing is uh the main locations do take place outside of like ddo game locations like the first half really takes place primarily in ddo locations but the second half uh, goes and takes place in like dwarven locations that are not really they, they are not in ddo um, the game. So also the, the novel is more of like a solo adventure focused thing. Sometimes Sabiro, Sabiro mainly is like soloing in these, uh, adventures she goes on sometimes duoing, but, uh, mostly soloing. So it's not like, uh, you're not going to encounter like a traditional, like party, um, mechanic, like a party, uh, a, a party story here when you have like, you know, five adventurers, like a rogue and a 
fighter and a mage. Like you're not going to have like that party dynamic in this novel. It's more focused pretty much solely on Sabira uh, rather than a, a variety of characters. She's, she really drives the novel. Um, so yeah, uh, guys, I think that's it. I mean, I guess overall, you know, I really enjoyed the novel. I think it's, it was good. It certainly kept me interested last week. I mean, I read the whole thing in uh, a week basically, which is pretty fast for me. I'm a pretty slow reader and I don't read novels very often, but yeah, I think if you're, you know, if you're really into reading about DDO, I mean, this is a, a like you would, especially if you're a long-term player, you would pick up on a lot of things that someone approaching this without being a veteran player of DDO, um, wouldn't see. So yeah, I mean, yeah, give it a, give it a read. If you like, I think it's pretty good novel. It's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, guys, um, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you think. Have you read this novel? Did you know that DDO actually had novels that existed? Uh, let me know. Be interested in reading that. And I'll put links below in the description to like Amazon and um, the author's website and, and other places where you can get more information and learn more about, about these novels. So, also, let me know. Do you want me to read the sequel and do a video on that? I could. Like, if I get a lot of people who want me to, I'll consider doing that. So, guys, all right, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Have a good one. Take care.